If this is your first Sunday and you're just now stepping into this series, My Big Fat Mouth, do yourself a favor. Go back to our website, SiegeChurchTN.com, and go find the messages and listen or watch the other three parts of this series. Uh, it will, it, it'll be really helpful to you. It'll benefit you. Uh, we've, we've talked about complaining. We've talked about criticizing. We've talked about lying. And, uh, and, and to get into what we're talking about today, I want to tell you this story about these three fishing buddies. These three guys were out on the lake, they're fishing, they'd got out there super early in the morning before the sun had even come up, and uh, they've been out there, now it's late into the morning, they'd, nobody has caught a fish, they hadn't even got any nibbles, and so they're just, this, their minds are, they're going out of their minds, and one guy says, hey, you guys remember last week we were in church and the pastor talked about that scripture in James where, you know, we confess our sins to each other and we pray for each other. And then there's like some kind of inner healing that the Holy Spirit brings. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we remember that. Why don't we do that right now? I mean, we're all out here in the boat and the privacy out here. This seems like a great opportunity. The other guys were like, sure, that sounds like a great idea. So the guy that brings up the, this whole thing, he goes first. He says, you know what? I know you guys, you've known me for years and years and years. And you've known that I've struggled with the problem of greed. And um, I just want to confess that over the last couple of years, I've been embezzling for my company. And I want to put a stop to it. I want to somehow make it right. And I need prayer. And I need you guys to pray with me. So they all put their fishing poles down and they pray and have this powerful moment. Then the next guy speaks up. He goes, you guys, I really appreciate your friendship over the years. And but I, I want to say this. I want to confess this. There's been something I've been keeping secret for over a year now. I've been having an adulterous affair. And I know it's wrong. The Holy Spirit is getting at me. And, and I need to be free from this and make this right. And I need help. And they all put their fishing poles down and they pray for the guy. And it's a powerful moment. Then the third guy says, you know, um, we've known each other a long time, you guys. And there's something I've struggled with as well. And it's, it's not greed. It's not adultery. Uh, and then he gets real quiet and he just kind of bites his lip. And the guys are like, it's okay, man. You can tell us what's going on. What, what is it? And he kind of mumbles, well, what? Uh, and he's a little louder this time. No. I'm like, come on, man. You got to come out with it. Get free. Confess. We're going to pray with you. He goes, all right. Gossip. Gossip is the thing that I struggle with, and I can't tell you guys right now how bad I just want to get off this boat and onto the shore right now. <laughs> gossip. We're talking about the problem of gossip. What is gossip? Gossip is it's idle talk. It's, it's, it's uh, rumors, uh, specifically about like personal and private matters that typically don't really have anything to do with you. We're talking about other people's private and personal matters. And, and it's, it's a deal. And we've all heard this. We've all heard it said that knowledge is power or information is power. And there's a tremendous amount of truth in that statement. The, that power can be used, this knowledge, this information can be used to either build people up or it can be used to tear people down. And so whether the knowledge is true or whether the knowledge is false, when information gets out there, it can have damaging effects on someone's soul, on their heart. It can have devastating effects on relationships. It can cause major waves in the workplace or at school. It can even cause a lot of damage in the church. The problem of gossip is a serious matter. And I just want to say this real quickly. When I think about these four things that we've been talking about over, over these weeks, complaining, criticizing, lying, and now gossip, 
All four of these things are pretty serious issues, but, but when I think about the thing that destroys churches the most, it's typically this one. All those other three things, are those things exist, those things are problems, but usually the thing that I see destroy churches the most is this one because it kind of usually flies under the radar sometimes a little bit less than the others. This is a deal. So let me ask a question, and I, and I just want to everyone to be honest right now, everybody to be transparent. I'm going to ask a question. This is not about identifying yourself as a victim, but what it is about is identifying the, the real serious pain and hurt that can come uh, as a result of gossip. Um, who here has ever experienced any kind of pain as the result of gossip? Okay, hands are going around the room. Almost every hand is up. Right. We all have felt this kind of pain, this kind of effect. And it might be something that, that's just an inward pain. And for some of us, myself included, I've been the, the target of gossip or there's been outward pain as a result of gossip. Like, it, it's not just something that just hurt my feelings. It was something that had real consequences in life because people said things that weren't their business to say. People said things that were not said in context. People said things that got misunderstood by other parties. And it hurts. And it's awful. And it destroys relationships. It, it'll, like I said, it'll make waves in the workplace. It'll destroy churches. You may or may not know this, God's word has quite a bit to say on this matter. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 8 says this, rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. Rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. I really like the way that the message paraphrase puts it. This is what the message says. Listening to gossip is like eating cheap candy. Do you really want that junk in your belly? And I just have to thank God right now for Dr. Peterson who wrote this message paraphrase because it gives me an excuse to do this illustration right now. <clears throat> Got my M&Ms here. And, you know, gossip is like eating M&Ms, you know. These are dainty morsels, right? It's cheap candy. And it's good. And I eat one. I can't just have one. I need another one, Right? And then I need another one. At least one more. Come on. And another one. It's good. Dainty morsels. Now, are M&Ms good for me? No. Come on now. Brother Rick, you need some of these. No, they're not good for me. These M&Ms are not good for my body, but I want them. And I just have to have, have one more. I got three more actually right there. I just want to keep eating them. And you know what? They're so good. I need to share them with you. So, let you guys get some there. Here's some for you. Have some of these dainty morsels. They're so good. Rick, you need some. Oh, look. He, cu he cupped his hands. There we go. You have not because you asked not. Dale, have some of these dainty morsels, Dale. They're so good. They're not good for you, but they're so delicious. They're so delicious. You just, you, you, got, you can't just eat one. You have to have more, and you have to more, have more, have more. And this is what gossip is like. Did you hear about John and Jane? No, I didn't hear. Tell me. Tell me. What about them? Well, John did this. See, so dainty morsel. And then, and then when, jo when Jane heard about it, she said this. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Are you kidding me? No, that's true. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Does Jack know? I don't know if he knows or not. But I tell you what, we're going to text him right now. And we're going to find out. Can you send M&Ms to the phone? I don't know. This is what gossip is like. We're eating these M&Ms one after another, after another, after another. And before we know it, we're going to eat the whole bag. 
We're going to eat the entire bag, and now what? I feel disgusting. I feel gross. I feel sick. I already literally feel gross. My inside of my mouth feels <laughs> gross right now. And, I, and we've overloaded our bodies on this junk. Was it worth it? No. Oh, man. I, I just, in that moment, in the moment, I just thought, oh, this is so good. It's just so worth it. But now, now, I wish I hadn't even laid eyes on this bag of M&M's. And when we gossip, we get this momentary buzz. We get this momentary sugar buzz, like eating these M&M's. Oh, it's so good. It's so delicious. But the only thing we're doing is we're filling up on junk. And just like the dentist says, the dentist says, what does that say? That candy's going to rot your teeth. Gossip will rot your heart. In the Christian world, get that away from me. In the Christian world... We sometimes disguise gossip as concern for another brother or sister. We say, did you hear about Susan? No, I didn't hear. Tell me all about it. Listen, if you were really concerned about Susan, why don't you just call Susan up yourself and say, Susan, how can I pray for you and how can I serve you? Sometimes we think, well, J.D., it's not really gossip if what we're chatting about is actually true. It's been confirmed. It's not gossip. It's only gossip if it's not 100% true. It's only gossip if it's not speculation. Let me just say this. That's the low way of thinking. That's the low road. The high road is this. Everything that is said needs to be true. But not everything that's true has to be said. Everything that you say does need to be true, but not everything that is true has to be said. You don't have to say it. Proverbs 18, 21, we keep coming around back to this verse over and over and over, and it's so true. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So the question is, what do you want to do with your power? Do you want to destroy people with your power? Or... Do you want to use your power to make a life-giving difference in someone else's life? Because you have the power to do that with your words. Maybe you think, well, what is it? Who is this really hurting? Who does this hurt that we talk about this? But the truth is that gossip hurts a lot of people. It can cause a lot of harm to a lot of people. First of all, this is a no-brainer. It can cause Harm, it can cause hurt to the person it's spoken about. Gossip hurts the person it's spoken about. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 29 says this, A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Gossip hurts the person it's spoken about. Many of us, we, we have experienced the pain that is attached to this truth. Close friendships, family relationships have experienced some kind of divorce as the result of somebody sharing something that they shouldn't have shared. Gossip hurts the person it's spoken about. Also, gossip hurts the listener. I think we don't maybe think about that sometimes. Gossip hurts the listener. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 4 says, Wrongdoers easily listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. So we could say this. When we listen to gossip willingly, sit there and willingly hear it, then we're doing wrong. We're wrong. Listen, what you permit, you promote. What you permit... You promote. If you just sit there and listen to some jabberwocky vomit their gossip all over you, then what are you doing? You're saying, it's okay. It's so, this is okay what you're doing right now. And, and I put my stamp of approval on it. That's what you're doing. And let me just ask you this. If you know someone is, is, is talking trash about someone else to you, what in the world makes you think that they're not talking trash about you to someone else? Gossip hurts the person that's spoken about. Gossip hurts the listener. Is there anyone else that gossip hurts? Well, of course. Gossip also hurts the speaker. The person actually doing it, engaging. It's coming out of their mouth. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 9 says, When arguing with your neighbor, don't betray another person's secret. 
Others may accuse you of gossip, and you will never regain your good reputation. Whoa. If that won't stop you in your tracks right there. You'll never regain your good rep reputation if people know you as a gossip. You're destroying it. You're destroying your reputation. Think of the people that you know in your life. Maybe, maybe you don't have many people right now. Maybe it's been at some other point in your life. But think of the people that you know have been the biggest gossips. And let me ask you, are those the kind of people that you want to emulate your life after? Do you want to be like them? Oh, man, I tell you what, I love, I love to be like them. Destroying people all the time. Yeah, I want to be just like them. Sign me up for that. No, you don't want to be like that. Nobody thinks that way. Nobody wants to, to destroy people's lives. Gossip hurts the person it's spoken about. It hurts the listener, and gossip hurts the speaker. And I want to say this. If this is you, if you're the one gossiping, when you talk trash about people when they're not around, it actually says probably more about you than what you're saying about someone else. You're destroying your reputation. So what do we do? What do we do about the problem of gossip? Well, first of all, this is like super simple, but it's super effective. Guard your ears. Guard your ears. Did you know if someone is coming at you with a dainty morsel of gossip, you can usually pull the e-brake and stop them pretty fast with one question. This, was, this is found in some psychology magazine. He said, just ask this one question when someone comes at you with gossip. Just ask, why are you telling me this? Why are you telling me this? And usually what that will do is we'll make them stop and take a mental inventory of going, yeah, why am I saying what I'm saying? Why am I saying this to them? Hopefully, if they're, <laughs> if they're not too far deep into the gossip rabbit hole, they can just pop right back up. Why are you telling me this? Another great question to ask is this, is have you had a chance to talk to this person about this? <clears throat> have you had a chance to actually go to this person and talk to them about this issue? Why this question? Because um, typically, maybe not every time, but probably a lot of the time, the answer probably will be, uh, no, uh, I haven't talked to them about this. Well, I tell you what, why don't you uh, go talk to them about this? Because that's actually what's going to benefit the situation. It's going to benefit everybody. It's going to serve everybody the best. If Instead of telling me all about it, why don't you just go talk to them about this? Where do we get this kind of question? Where do we get this kind of reason? Listen to what Jesus said here in Matthew chapter 18. He says, If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. Other translations say, you've made a friend. Go talk to the people that the information's about if, if you need to do that. Sometimes you get information and you don't need to do anything with it because it's none of your business. You know there's a scripture that talks about not being a busybody? That's a whole other sermon. We'll get to that. That's... My big fat life or something, I don't know. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, it, let, let me just say this. this is, it's not just a clever idea. This is not just a, a clever idea that Jesus taught us. Have you had a chance to talk about this with somebody? You need to guard your ears. And Jesus gives us this, this spiritual strategy of saying, go talk to the person that this has to deal with. Don't, don't, don't go talk to anybody else first. Now, if they don't listen to you, you can keep reading there in Matthew 18. We have some other instruction about bringing people into the conversation. But the first thing that you do is you go talk to them. So, first of all, close, or excuse me, guard your ears, and then secondly, close your mouth. Guard your ears and close your mouth. Again, incredibly simple, but incredibly effective. Here's another great verse here from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. It says, watch your tongue. And keep your mouth shut, and you will stay out of trouble. 
All right. Yeah, you can clap for that. Praise the Lord. It's the Word of God. I think there's some teenagers that were like, yes, I should do that. <laughs> that would help me. Let's say this. Well, let's actually just all say this together, but let's say it in the first person. Just repeat it after me. Say, I will watch my tongue. And shut my mouth. And I'll stay out of trouble. Say it again. I'll watch my tongue. Shut my mouth. And I'll stay out of trouble. There you go. You've got a mem- your memory verse right there. Some of you, this is the first verse you've ever memorized. And it's really that easy. So... Here's a question to help you remind yourself to wash your tongue and keep your mouth shut. And here's the question. When you're about to speak about another person, would you want them to tell someone else similar kind of information about you? When you're about to to speak about someone else, would you want them to tell similar information about you to someone else? This question, again, it emerges from another Jesus strategy. In Luke chapter uh, 6, verse 31, Jesus says this. We all know this. The entire world knows this verse. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. And so in context, do you know who Jesus was talking about right here in Matthew chapter 6? This is like Sermon on the Mount right here stuff. Jesus was talking about the people that you would consider to be your enemies, Wait a second. Whoa. I don't just going to do to my friends the way that I want them to do to me. I'm going to do to my enemies the way that I would want them to do me. Yes, that's what Jesus was saying. Everybody, friend and foe. Do to others the way that you would want them to do. The people I don't like, yeah, especially them. Because it's easy. It's easy to be great to your friends. There's nothing special about that. Being great to your friends is easy. But we need the power of the Holy Spirit to come and transform us and help us to do to others the way that we would have them to do to us. Guard your ears. Close your mouth. Here's the deal. Here's the problem with with gossip. Here's the problem with complaining. The problem with criticizing. The problem with lying. The problem isn't just your big fat mouth. The real issue has to do with our hearts. Because Jesus said that it's out of the abundance of our heart, that's when our mouth speaks. It's like whatever our heart is full of, it's going to spill out of our mouth. So this is not just about, well, if I can just get my words together, if I can just get my act together. No, this is about looking at the condition of your heart. When we partake in gossip, whether we're the one gossiping or whether we are the one willingly listening to the gossip, The spirit and the attitude of gossip says this, I am strong because they are weak. The spirit and the attitude of gossip tells our heart, I am strong because they are weak. But the gospel proclaims when I'm weak, that's when I'm actually being strong. That's when I'm actually being made stronger. Gossip says, I am strong because they are weak. But the gospel says, when I am weak, I'm actually being made stronger. Paul writes to the church in Corinth about some special revelations that he's getting from the Lord. And he said this, says this in chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. But the Lord answered me. And this is what the Lord said. My grace is always more than enough for you. And my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So Paul says, well, I'm going to celebrate my weakness then. For when I'm weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. And I just want to say this. Paul's not talking about like weakness in the area of like, oh, I'm just going to run off and go sin. I'm going to willingly go sin. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about the like striving in your own power. He says, when I'm weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. So I'm not defeated by my weakness, but delighted. For when I feel my weakness, I am made yet stronger. For my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. My gosh, I love that. For my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. Gossip says, I am strong because they are weak. But the gospel says, no, 
When I am weak, I'm being made stronger because the power of Christ is working in me and through me. It's in this revelation of this spiritual truth when our heart and our head are transformed. We start recognizing to ourselves, you know what? I don't have to put anybody else down to prop myself up. I don't have to make someone else look lesser so that I can feel loved and accepted. I'm already loved and accepted by the creator of the universe, thank God. It's when our head and our heart gets transformed. And when my head and my heart get transformed, guess what else gets transformed? My big fat mouth. And I find that I'm not complaining. And I'm not criticizing. And is it because I'm trying really hard? No, it's just the automatic byproduct because my head and my heart are in the right place with the Lord. And I'm not lying and I'm not gossiping. I'm not doing that stuff. And instead of having a big fat mouth, I have a favored filled mouth. And I start speaking life over my circumstances and life over my marriage and life over my kids and life over my job situation and life over my finances and life over my health. And instead of people, when they see you coming, instead of them turning and walking away, they're going to they're gonna wait around because they can't wait to hear what you say next. Because you're always got the life of God coming out of you. Every time I open my mouth, I'm speaking over people. Life. Life. Is this what you want for your life? It's what I want for my life. It's what I want for my family. It's what I want for this church. It's what I want for my community. It's what I want. Would you stand with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now. We thank you, first of all, that you are a good father. You don't try to change us by beating us over the head. But it's your kindness that leads us to repentance. God, thank you. So we approach your throne boldly because of what your son Jesus has done. And for those of us who've been having issues with these things, whether it's gossip or complaining or criticizing or lying or some other issue with our mouth, we ask you, Holy Spirit, right now to get to the root of our issue in our heart. Come and heal our hearts where we're broken, where we're wounded, where we're believing lies. Come and shine the light of your truth. And, and those of us, God, that have been struggling with this and we, we've been wrestling with it and we've not surrendered it to you and we surrender it right now and we ask you for your forgiveness and we ask you also Lord to give us the power to forgive those who've gossiped about us those who've hurt us those who've wounded us Holy Spirit we ask you now to give us the strength give us what we need to forgive from the heart not just say that we forgive them but to truly forgive them from the heart we ask you right now for that supernatural power. We ask you to come and heal our hearts. Make them new again. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us see you clearly. Help us see the Father clearly. Help us see ourselves the way that he sees us. Help transform our head and our heart so that our mouth is transformed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you're here today, you're far from the Lord, I want to give you an opportunity to take a step forward and say, you know what, I don't want to be far from God. I want to, I want to follow Jesus. I want to be who God called me to be. I want to do what he called me to do. And if that's you today, I just want to invite you to pray with me right now. I'm going to pray and I'm just invite everyone in the room to just repeat after me, whether you're a believer or whether you're just making this decision for the first time, or maybe you're remaking the decision. Maybe you were following the Lord, but at, at some point you've, you've drifted. Maybe you didn't even mean to. But I want to invite you right now to respond to the invitation the Holy Spirit is giving you to say, come and follow Jesus. Everybody just pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you now. And I'm broken. I'm a mess. And I surrender my life to you. My life is now yours. 
I repent of my ways. I turn from those. And I turn to you. All of me belongs to you. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I ask you now to fill me with your Holy Spirit and make a difference with my life. Continue your work of healing inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.